Hey guys, Cam here from Pocketlint and all kinds of interesting things are happening in the world of Apple for 2020, whether it's releasing an Apple Silicon powered laptop or a genuine awesome flagship powered phone that happens to be tiny in the iPhone 12 mini. The company now has arguably its most diverse product portfolio in its history. And one of the devices relatively recently launched is the iPad Air. We think it could be one of its best devices yet. And this is our review. As always, if you do like this video, by the time you get to the end of it, of course, please do hit that thumbs up. It helps us a lot. Leave a comment below if you want to and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any more of our videos. Now what's interesting about the iPad Air this year, at least from the design perspective, is that it shifted towards a design that was, until 2020, limited to the Pro series. That means skinny bezels all the way around the display and a connector point for smart keyboards. Like this ludicrously expensive Magic Keyboard, which is actually brilliant for typing on, even while it's sat on your lap. Now you don't get all the Pro features with the iPad Air just because the design is the same. For instance, you get a Touch ID fingerprint recognition in the power button instead of Face ID. So if you do end up getting one, we highly recommend registering fingerprints from two different fingers so that when you're using it in landscape and portrait, you're not having to reach around awkwardly to get to it. It's safe to say, however, that the iPad Air of 2020 is vastly different to the one that came before it. The edges are flat and it's available in multiple colors, including this green one. And there's a reassuring strength and a durability to this new design. That frame feels virtually unbendable, despite being really thin. And the Type-C port means you can charge it from the same connector and you have access to use various other accessories to plug into it as well. As for that display, it's LCD based, which means you don't get the inky black levels of darkness and vibrant colors of an OLED panel, but it's still very good. Contrast is still high for LCD and colors have a bit of punch to them without ever looking oversaturated. And the display being the ratio that it is makes it incredibly versatile, whether you're browsing the web, shooting out emails or editing video, which actually it can do to an extent. It's big enough to be useful, but not so big that it makes carrying the iPad around impractical. Even watching movies and TV shows on it is a pleasant experience. Although, of course, with the longer aspect ratio of films and videos, you will find quite heavy letterboxing on the top and the bottom. Add that panel to the fluidity and the feeling that the software gives you, and it's just an all-round joy to use on a daily basis. All the interactions on screen are smooth, and the layers move and flow as you'd want them to. Now, for creatives, as we've alluded to already, the iPad Air for 2020 can be a very useful tool. You get second generation pencil support, which not only means you can make use of creative apps like Procreate or Handwrite Notes in Notes, but you also can snap it onto the side of the tablet to charge it easily. Inside, the A14 Bionic processor is very powerful and more than capable of keeping up with any demanding task that you throw at it. It's just quick and easy. In fact, for a lot of things you'd use a laptop for, the iPad Air is a very suitable replacement, especially when you factor in the support for the trackpad on various accessories. You can almost use it like a laptop. Now it is missing the 120Hz refresh rate that you get on the Pro model, and that helps some elements of the software and animation feel a bit smoother and faster. But with up to 10 hours battery life, it does mean you can sit on the couch all day to play Plants vs Zombies. Unless that's just me who does that. And even the camera is useful on the Air. It's similar to the single 12 megapixel one that you found on last year's flagship iPhones. So it's more than capable of taking a good picture and shooting good quality video. So on the whole then, as a full package and considering pricing, we think this is the best tablet out there for most people. You get a lot of those pro features, but in a package that's more affordable. It's essentially a slightly slimmed down version of an iPad Pro and does nearly everything the iPad Pro can do, and does it pretty much just as well. Unless you absolutely have to have the 120Hz screen or dual cameras, we think you'll be more than happy with this. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media. Follow me on there, ask me any questions if you want to, or you can use the comments section down below. If you did like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of them, hit that little bell. I'll see you again soon.